Cases of valley fever are surging all across the state. How bad is it? Last year, Arizona saw a nearly 45% jump in the number of cases compared to the year before. And while most people will recover from valley fever, for others it can be life-threatening. That is why doctors and researchers at the new Valley Fever Clinic at Mayo are coming together to better understand, diagnose, and treat the disease. Dr. Thomas Griss is co-director of microbiology at the Mayo Clinic in Scottsdale. He's been studying valley fever for over 15 years. Yeah, it's something about the soil and the climate that it is in this area, and um, we're still not 100% sure where it exists in the environment, but certainly we know that it, it thrives here and uh, all you need to do is have lungs and breathe. Valley fever is caused by a fungus called coccidioides that lives in our desert soil. It's too small to see, but can be easily inhaled when soil becomes airborne. And once inside the lungs, the fungus can cause infection. The symptoms are similar to a bad cold, but for some, it can be severe. You couldn't tell it by now, but um, I lost a lot of weight, probably 30 or 40 pounds in less than a month period. Six years ago, 54-year-old Chris Sams was active and working as a district manager for a bicycle company. So we were always riding our bikes. I think I was riding my bike outside 100, 150 miles a week. So I was always outside and or I was watching the dust storms. Today, Chris is one of Mayo's most severe cases of valley fever, and there is no cure. I have problems walking, brain fog, uh, and then I don't know if it's from the valley fever, but I've spent a number of trips. I've lost how many times I've been in the hospital. Um, so it, it, it's a tough go at it. Dr. Marie Grill is Chris's doctor. Unfortunately uh, for less than 5% of the uh, population, the infection can spread outside of the lung and can go elsewhere in the body. And when they're spread to the brain, that can cause meningitis and a number of complications related to that meningitis. It can be very severe. Every two weeks, Chris comes in for an intensive treatment to target the fungus that has spread to his brain. Um, and so this is what we call intrathecal administration of a medication. And like Chris said, it means introducing the medication directly into the central nervous system. Using a needle, antifungal drugs are injected directly into Chris's brain through a reservoir implanted underneath his skull. Chris's complex case of valley fever is one of many being treated at Mayo's new valley fever clinic, where doctors and researchers are collaborating. So most of this in the first point of contact in an urgent care setting, people aren't even being tested. And part of the reason they're not tested is because the results take a couple days to come back. Dr. Griss, along with researchers from ASU, are focused on improving testing. They've invented the world's first rapid blood test for valley fever. So this is um, our prototype uh, valley fever serologic test. Um, so as you can see, it looks like the rapid test that we would see during COVID times. Mm -hmm. We just put a little drop of the specimen there and then put three drops of buffer on. Oh, this really is like the COVID test. And then we just wait 10 minutes, but um, that's till the final result is complete. We'll see in just a few seconds, uh, the sample will start running across the membrane and um, usually we can see a result starting to show up pretty early. And in a medical setting, I mean, this would be great because a doctor would be able to prescribe medicine right away. Right, right. Or uh, tell the patient why they don't need the antibiotic that they think they need because most people will recover without treatment. The blue line is our control line. That'll turn pink when we see that the, uh, the fluid has passed over. Oh. The, the T is the test line, and you can see it starting to appear. Oh. And so this is the one that would tell you that you have an antibodies against the fungus. It's kind of fun, you can see it like right before your eyes. But for Chris, valley fever has been life altering. He credits his wife and daughter for supporting him and the doctors at Mayo for helping him get his life back. Chris has been incredibly tenacious, um, incredibly strong, um, 
patient um, and always kind uh, through the whole process. Um, although I think many uh, having had such a difficult situation um, wouldn't necessarily have. I think awareness is the biggest thing since Maricopa County is the number one county for cases nationwide. Um, don't just sweep it under the rug. Speak about it, talk about it. So this Valley Fever 10 minute rapid test is expected to be on the market by the end of the year. So you should be able to go to your urgent care or your doctor's office and ask for it and get results in 10 minutes. Of course, and, and as you were saying, we're ground zero. Yes. For not just Arizona, but specifically Maricopa County. Yes, and you know, last year they saw a 45% increase from 2003. Yeah. And this year they're saying it's on track. And a lot of that is due to the fact that more people have moved to the Valley. And then also their uh, doctors and people are more aware of it. So they're testing more, yeah. right? But this rapid test will get you results in 10 minutes as opposed to, you know, two days or maybe yeah. even a couple of weeks. I'm right? sure there are a lot of us that have had it. And don't and even know it. Never knew it unless we get the rapid, the rapid test. test. <laughs> and then we'll have the antibody. All right.